Hey everybody, welcome back to another video review. It's been a while since I've um, kind of gotten back to doing video reviews of some of my, my pieces. I've been a little bit um, distracted by video capturing gameplay or video games, um, especially six-year-old first-person shooters. But I was trying to kind of get back into it a little bit more with um, you know, statue and video reviews, and this is a pretty special piece I just got in recently. So, uh, this is a, a so called miniature uh, paint up, although it's not that small. Um, I think in the miniature world, you know, she's considered gigantic uh, because a lot of uh, miniatures obviously are, are very, very tiny pieces. Uh, you can see some of my. If you search uh, some of my older YouTube videos, you'll see the ones I've done of the, the Blood Rage miniatures. Give you an idea <clears throat> of how small they really are. So in the world of miniatures, I mean, she's you know, huge, but for like a statue collector, she's actually um, quite small. So I don't have much information about her. Um, I don't believe she's necessarily limited edition or anything like that. She uh, comes as a kit, I'm pretty sure. I don't know where to buy her. Um, all I know is that she's called uh, the fairy. And um, I uh, first saw her like this, completely uh, finished um, on the you know, putty and paint page, I think, of um, you know, the uh, Swedish painter, um, Robert Carlson, uh, who I've commissioned to do some pieces for me, who I've bought some pre-painted uh, pieces from as well. He's a brilliant painter uh, from Sweden, and he specializes in, of course, miniature painting. Um, I, I think he may actually have shown this off uh, initially on his Facebook page, actually, before putting it up on Putty and Paint. Um, but this is just a very, very special, uh, beautiful paint-up. Um, it's of a, a fairy, of course, sitting on a flower. And um, what's there really to say about the paint job uh, other than it's remarkable? And when I first saw this, it was just so striking. And of course, you know, I, I asked him if he was gonna sell it he said no you know he this was not for sale um, it's a one-of-a-kind piece um, and the reason of course he couldn't sell it as I learned later is that this was a competition piece and um, I think it was still the season um, of competition and he took this ferry I think to three countries to enter it in various competitions and uh, she did very very well an award winner uh, for fantasy art and painting. I think it's pretty easy to see why. Uh, but after kind of you know, multiple inquiries and after the competition season had ended for 2019, he did finally decide uh, to sell to me. Uh, it's a very, very difficult piece to ship in one piece. Um, the wings do come off, you have to glue them on. Um, and you know, if you look at this thing, it's just um, very, it's like sort of miraculous that it actually came to me without catastrophic damage. But as you can see, it did make it. Um, some pieces kind of fell apart. I had to re-glue and put together, but there was no actual um, break break <clears throat> um, that required a lot of, you know, professional repair, luckily. So you can see her in sort of all her glory. Um, Kind of beautiful fairy, you know, like just uh, sitting or resting on a uh, flower with another little like elf or spirit um, hanging out with her. Um, everything about the piece is just amazing. Like I love the sculpt in and of itself. Um, they did a wonderful job sort of recreating um, the petals of the flower. Um, uh, as well as sort of the the leaves, you know, and of course the the pollen right over here. 
the main stem of the flower as well. And um, you really have to appreciate this piece under natural lighting, which is what I'm doing here. Um, you could do it under flash, but then it just sort of bleeds out all of the magic and it just kind of showcases it, um, you know, uh, all of the colors. It doesn't do as good a job if you just kind of let natural light play out. So she looks the most beautiful sort of like this. But they did a wonderful job on the flowers, very real. Um, it feels almost like, you know, if you were to touch it, it, would almost, it almost feels like it, it's going to be soft, like the real petals of a flower. Um, the girl, of course, is the centerpiece, and they sculpt her in such a sort of wonderful, naturalistic style, uh, the way she's sort of leaning back casually. Again, it's uh, simple to sculpt uh, the human body standing, that's sort of the most neutral pose, or again, with the Captain Morgan with your foot raised up. Um, <clears throat> but here, you know, she's not doing that. She's sort of laying casually back, you know, with her knees sort of uh, crossed. Not really crossed, but what do you call this position? I mean, this is what you don't want your kids to, <laughs> to sit in, right? What's that little rhyme, crisscross applesauce, or whatever? You're always telling like young kids not to you know, um, sit like that because it's bad for the knees. But, you know, she's resting like this. Her hands are sort of stabilizing. One hand is stabilizing her. She's sort of casually leaning back. Here's the other arm on her leg. Um, this is a very naturalistic pose. And it's really hard to pull off. Like, you know, how are you going to you know, sculpt somebody lounging? So sculpting um, the human body in motion, sculpting it, um, you know, uh, laying back casually or sitting, uh, those really are very challenging because you just have to figure out a way of doing it so that it looks real. And so I think the sculptor here did a really uh, fantastic job kind of showcasing this sort of casual, you know, sitting, lounging. And then of course, um, the portrait is remarkable. This is a really, really nice um, portrait. Uh, and it's striking because, you know, a lot of uh, modern day statues, at least, all of the portraits sort of feel a little bit unreal. Um, maybe because a lot of the comic book depictions are unreal, very stylized. And so uh, this really uh, feels like a real face. It looks like the face of a real person. Um, and, you know, pretty, but it has that touch of authenticity. Um, again, just, you know, very, very pretty, but very, very real. It feels like a real person. It almost feels as if um, she could have been based on, like, a, a again, like a, a sister or, you know, uh, a wife. Uh, someone, again, that you could buy was a real human being versus sort of the over-stylized um, faces of some of the modern comic book statues, etc. So I really love this face um, and how naturalistic, again, um, and realistic it is. And of course the entire sort of, you know, uh, set up with her little elf friend, sort of sitting there, checking things out. It's just moving back a beautiful, beautiful piece altogether. And now of course for the true genius, which is the paint job. Um, what can I really say about the paint? It's very, interesting. Um, I think sort of the genius of what Robert did for this one, and I don't know if he was really going for it or uh, what, this is just what I see. So, you know, there is, you know, sort of what the artist intends and then what um, the audience interprets. And sometimes the audience interprets more than even the artist intends. But the thing that I've noticed that he does very well, and that is a technique that maybe a lot of miniaturists engage in, is um, they're very, very skilled at painting an effect that normally you would have to rely on from the you know, real world to give you. Meaning, I'll give you uh, an example. One of the examples that they're really uh, good at is 
painting what they call non-metallic metal or NMM technique. And what that means is that rather than say painting or using metallic paints to paint swords or armor or whatnot or any metallic you know, finish, rather than using the metal paints, what they do is they use you know, non-traditional, non-metallic paints, whether it's you know, gray, brown, black, and they mix it, and whites. And what they do is they sort of painstakingly recreate what metal would look like under the sun, glinting in the sun. And they recreate the entire effect purely through non-metallic paint. <clears throat> and that's like a very, very uh, crazy, difficult thing to pull off well, I think. Um, where you'll look at the miniature and just sort of appreciate it from a certain distance, you will feel like the, the little miniature actually has real metal, you know, and you will swear by it. And you would see the glint of the light of the metal. And then you realize there is no light. It's just the way they painted it on and there is no metal. It's just how they do it. And the really, really great ones do it to an extent where you would swear that you know it is actual metal, but it's not. Now, why is that relevant here? I feel like when I look at the paint job for this fairy, um, it utilizes something very similar. It's almost impressionistic uh, in its effect. Um, and what I mean by that is, when you look at it from this distance, um, the overall effect is just mesmerizing. It looks like a painting come to life, um, but it's you know, of course 3D form. And it's just so striking in terms of um, the overall effect it gives you. Um, she seems almost like alive. I guess the greatest compliment is this combination of the sculpt and the paint. Uh, for a minute there, you actually think that this is like a real human woman of miniature size. Like it's a real human being. Like for one second, like she's just frozen. She's just kind of looking at you and you almost expect her to move. And that's a just huge tribute to the both the sculpt and of course the paint is that you know you almost feel like like she's real that she's about to move but that's amazing actually you know and that's again what separates this from any other piece that I have that I've seen another thing is if you go too close like you know you're going like super close within a couple of inches um, she she doesn't quite look as good. And I don't mean that as a criticism. I just mean that just like, I mean, that, that's what I mean when I say impressionistic. So just as a um, impressionistic painting looks very, very good from a certain distance. And then when you come too close, it's like you spoil the illusion in a way almost. You start seeing the individual brush strokes and the splotches. Um, you know, I don't, I feel like impressionistic works of art um, should not be enjoyed from an inch away with like bright floodlights highlighting every single dot, every single brush stroke. Um, that is like a classic example of missing the forest for the trees. And so if you go really, really close, um, you know, you start, it doesn't quite look as good. You see all of the little tiny maybe imperfections, the little bits of dirt, things like that on her body. It, it just seems weird, you know. But if you were to back up, all of the, the weird brush strokes, all of the weird colors, it all sort of fades away and it all combine, and it combines into just like one effect and somehow it all works. And so essentially what um, I feel like Robert was going for is this fairy um, and what she would look like if she was touched by the sun, you know, in the sun with the rays maybe slanting, the shadows caused by it. Now, of course, we don't have the sun here. We can't depend. We can't depend on the sun. So he painted her with all these different shades, um, and he painted her uh, in a way that actually recreates the um, effect of her under the sun, tanned with the shadows around her. Uh, it's all done by paint, uh, and that there is a you know tr uh, a school of painting, a way of doing it like that where rather than, for instance, relying on real shadows, you paint the shadows into the piece, for instance. Um, it can come off looking really bad, not, if not done well. But here, I mean, of course, it's done beautifully. 
And so, um, again, you know, you think that these areas here, for instance, are actually um, shadows or whatnot, but it's not. It's actually painted in. There's actually, um, you know, I don't know what, uh, he does, none, I don't think he uses airbrush because that's not what miniaturist painters usually do. But literally under like a, a microscope, he's using paint, uh, like a brush, to give you that effect. So that's one of the crazy things that I think miniaturists do is they actually paint the effects. They paint the effects of the sun, of a suntan, of shadows, of the glint of light on metal. None of that um, can be relied upon. They actually paint all of it into their pieces. We can see it no matter what time of day, no matter what angle. Um, and so that's actually, in my opinion, really remarkable. And this is what makes it one of my favorite pieces. Um, and very unique. Again, I want to kind of a little bit closer so you can kind of appreciate um, her face and then our little friend here um, and then backing up uh, this is the best way to sort of appreciate it against a, a black background and then just sort of slowly turning around yeah definitely something that uh, he should be very proud of I mean this is an amazing amazing uh, piece uh, also unique uh, I never really seen her anywhere else um, I'm sure that you can buy her so you have this very classy sort of uh, wooden base and the, the matte black and then the stem coming up you know the beautiful petals very nice flower and it's kind of a very unique interesting color that he chose for it um, you know purple and then the fairy herself sitting there so Again, now I want to go up close to kind of show you the detail, but again, just with, as with Impressionism, once you get close, you kind of begin to see all of these brush strokes and they sort of almost like ruin the illusion. Um, to get the full effect, you know, this is, this is where I like to see her, just like this. Now, by the way, um, even with like a nice, you know, reasonably nice camera, a video recording it, um, she looks infinitely better in person because along with the painted effects you have you have also of course the real um, effect of light creating shadow and she looks even more uh, real uh, in person so I hope you sort of enjoyed a little bit of the backstory I'm really um, honored and happy that Robert was willing to let her go and she traveled all the way across the Atlantic and the continental United States to find her final home here you can imagine this would be really, really hard to ship again without damage. The, the risk of damage is real. Uh, it's very difficult, you can imagine, to package her in a way where these things wouldn't just basically explode almost. So uh, pretty fortunate it made its way here. It's definitely one of the most intricate and more delicate pieces that he's ever put together. Um, and so, you know, there you go. Uh, I think the one takeaway from the overall effect of this, um, as a summary of what I find so special, is I feel like it's basically an impressionistic uh, painting, but come to life in sculptural form. So that's really unique. I've never really quite seen a statue painted like that, as if, again, it's an impressionist painting come to life. And um, that's one. And then two, of course, is the, is the, the actual portrait where she looks so real uh, she almost looks like a literal real fairy about to um, about to move, about to take off. And that's what makes this piece special. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this review. Again, I don't really know anything about her, about the producer, the limitation, or anything. This is a miniature type kit, which I don't have any you know real knowledge of. So for those of you who may, you can feel free to chime in the comments. Um, but you know, Robert simply calls her the fairy, and so I'll keep that name. Again, um, painted by the great Robert Carlson. And until next time, enjoy her and do take care.